Good evening, everyone. I'm going to wait for several of you to jump on tonight, and uh, we'll see how our Thursday night crowd is um, as we continue our 21 together. So let's uh, just wait for just a second and uh, see who jumps on with us and who's watching and who's going to be interacting with us tonight as we pray together and as we uh, kind of talk about our day a little bit and um, also as we uh, just share some things that God is doing. And uh, so we thank you guys for, for tuning in and for joining us. And uh, uh, it's been an awesome, awesome time. And God has been moving in a powerful, powerful way. And uh, already we've seen some pretty crazy things happen. And uh, we're so thankful for what God is doing and so thankful for for the opportunity we have to not only um, not only turn ourselves to the Lord, but also to become more like Him. And it really seems like this, this time already that we've been spending together, uh, you know, we've been four days into this and uh, <laughs> watching on the big screen. Wow. If you guys are watching on the big screen, I have a giant head, but I, my head must be massive if you guys are watching on the big screen. Sorry about that. I apologize ahead of time. Um, you know, we, we have been going through this time together, and God really has been moving in a pretty cool way. And um, uh, it, um, it never ceases to amaze me what God is doing, um, but at the same time, it surprises me a lot. Um, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm expectant, but at the same time, I'm amazed, if that makes sense to everybody. Um, I'm praying with expectation, but it seems like every time uh, there's an answer that comes, I'm still amazed by it every single time that God answers, because many times God answers in a different way than maybe what I thought he was going to answer. Um, so uh, we're going to jump right in. And uh, today we just finished day four. Uh, today was warring. Uh, that we are in a warfare. We are in a war for our prayer lives, that we are uh, in a war um, for to have a prayer life. And we talked yesterday about just having a, a just a militant warrior spirit when it comes to our prayer lives. And we decided to take on everything that tries to divert our focus away from uh, prayer, everything that tries to distract us from prayer. We just talked about Man, just uh, just taking that on head on, and really just uh, removing those distractions from our lives. And so tonight we're going to deal with something a little bit different. And uh, you may see the wording in your um, in your guide, and you may be thinking, "Well, is he really going to talk about location tonight?" Well, there's a reason why I I entitled it "Locating Ing." Again, we wanted everything to be Ing as it had to do with uh, this 21 days together, because ING says that it's ongoing. It, it's continuing to go on. It's like the ellipsis at the end of the sentence, that dot, dot, dot. It's like there's something else to come. This isn't it. It's like something else to come. So we wanted everything to take on that, that feel of ING, that it's something that's activated and it's ongoing, that when we're when we're finished with our 21 together, it's not going to be, we're not going to be finished with prayer and fasting. And um, we are going to be continuing on with what God is saying. So uh, today in your guide and, and tonight, we're going to be dealing with uh, day five, which will be tomorrow. We're going to deal with locating. Now, when in the moment I say that word locating, immediately we begin to think about, okay, the place where you're going to pray. And and some of that is true tonight, but we're going to do take a little bit of, of a slant on that thinking. And we're going to really go to the words of Jesus to see what he's really talking about here. You know, Jesus addressed the place of private prayer, and he kind of painted a picture of what that would look like. And in Matthew chapter 6, and verse 6, he says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So he says, When you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Now, here's Jesus' advice. Build your prayer life upon the bedrock of location. Like, here's when you pray, here's what you're to do. Now, 
there's a little bit of a slant on that because he said the Father is in the secret place. And when we shut our door, we're immediately with him. Instant intimacy that all you have to do to meet with the Father is shut your door. Now, immediately when we say shut your door, we immediately think of, you know, our home or our office or, you know, our war room or whatever it is. But in Jesus' case, understand, he didn't have a room where he could isolate himself from others. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says he went out to a solitary place to pray. And that's the idea behind shutting your door. Jesus meant we should find a place of solitude. Look, you can have a place of solitude in your car. You can have a place of solitude um, um, in another room in a house where, where people are doing things. You can have a place of solitude. When it's talking about shutting your door, it's not necessarily always talking about, okay, this room over here off to the side somewhere where nobody ever is. I'm not going to have any distractions. I'm going to be good to go. Because we all know that th- that those times don't happen every single day. We all know that those times, um, we don't always have that moment to go to that one room, that one place that's away from everybody else and begin to pray with zero distractions. Because we learned today that you've got a war for that time of prayer. You've got a war for that. You've got to break distractions. And it doesn't mean that the crickets stop. It doesn't mean that the children stop yelling. It doesn't mean any of that. It means you have to bring yourself to a place where you can pray and seek the face of God. When Jesus says, go into your room and shut your door, understand this is coming from a man who didn't have a room. It would always say Jesus would go to a solitary place. He would go to the mountain to pray. He would go to the garden to pray. He would he would go somewhere and then he would shut his door and get in the secret place of the Father. What's that mean? He would shut the door to all the outside distractions and all the outside influences. He would shut the door. He would shut those things off and he would come into alignment in the presence of the Father. And that's what we're to do. You know, you're always not going to have that one room of your house or that office or whatever, but you can get to a place where you shut the door to all the distractions that are around you and you can shut the door. You can go into the secret place and you can shut the door to everything that's around you. And when you do that, you can come into this place of, of, of solitude with the Lord. You can come into this place of, of, of solitude um, with the Lord. Um, we're going to read a scripture tonight in Psalm chapter 91. And this is it. This is also in your, um, in your guides, but in Psalm chapter 91, um, there is a, there is a word for us in this Psalm. And it says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Again, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The Most High and the Almighty. You, in the shelter, you will find rest. You don't just find rest when you're in a room and, and dead silence, but you can find rest in your everyday life. You can find rest at your job place. You can find rest at, at, at school. You can find rest uh, in your home full of people. You can find a place of rest, not because everything around you is not happening, but because what's happening in you is in the shelter of the Most High, under the shadow of of the Almighty. God has given us an opportunity to have peace with Him and to have rest. Listen, I God taught me this a long, long time ago, and I, I share this everywhere I go. When resting at night is not about um, uh, the hours of sleep, it is the amount of rest that you get. It's my belief that you can sleep five hours and get more rest than if you slept 10 hours. Because rest is not about sleep. It's about bringing yourself into this place of peace. So you can sleep in total peace without the REM, the rapid eye movement, without your mind going a thousand miles an hour, without your tossing and your turning, without all of that stuff, that you can, when you go to sleep, you can rest. And in that rest, you can have a peace that it doesn't take 10 hours of sleep for you to get peace and rest because you were at peace 
you get rest for five hours and it seems like you've slept so much more. You're reinvigorated. Why? Because you're in the shelter of the Most High. You're under the shadow of the Almighty. It's always been my contention that people who try to knock themselves out to sleep, a lot of times we can wake up in the morning and we feel as if we're more tired, even though we slept a lot of hours. And the reason for that is we try to knock out like our bodies to to go to sleep and our bodies are knocked out and really our soul is kind of knocked out, but our spirit is trying to talk to us and God's trying to speak to us in dreams and visions and he's trying to speak to us at night. So what's happening is our spirit is is warring against our body and against our, our, our soul. And so there's this like this war going on all night where God's trying to speak to us, yet our body and our soul are completely disconnected. And there's this war going on all night long. And we wake up the next morning. We're like, man, I slept 10 hours. Why am I so tired? It's because there was this war going on. But when you're at total peace, then there is a rest that comes upon your life. And Jesus says, look, if you if you want to find that, you've got to go into this place and you've got to shut your door. You've got to shut the door to everything that's outside of you. You've got to shut the door to all the distractions. You've got to shut the door and you've got to get into the secret place with the Father. And the secret place is not always a room of isolation. It is putting yourself in the shelter of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's pray right now. We're going to ask God to show us where our secret place is, how to get to that place. We're going to ask him. Uh, we're going to ask him to do that for us. So, Lord Jesus, we just come to you right now and we are asking you, Lord, uh, to help us, Lord, to find that secret place. Lord, to help us to shut the door to the distractions and to shut the door to the things around us. Lord, show us. Uh, those times let, that whether it's in our home or our car, or whether it's even just taking a walk outside where we can be in the shelter of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. And God, we can be at perfect peace and we can be at perfect rest. And that means that we can be in the secret place, even though we may be outside and even though there may be people all around us and maybe there be people walking by us and dogs barking and everything else. But while we're walking, we can be at total peace and rest and we can be in the secret place place with you because we shut the door and we are in the shelter of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. So Lord, we just pray against every lie of the enemy that would say that we've got to have a certain amount of time in this room or we've got to have a certain amount of time in that room or man, if we can't have uh, 90 minutes in this one specific room all by ourselves and somehow we can't be in the secret place. We break that lie right now in the name of Jesus and we declare that God, your presence is everywhere. You are everywhere all the time. And the moment we recognize that, we can welcome you wherever we are and we can be in the secret place with you. Lord, our desire is to have a place. Yes, Lord, we want to have a place. Lord, I'm thankful that you've given me a place in my home that I can go, that God, you've given me a place that, that not only represents a place where I can go. And Hey guys, sorry about that. Something happened and, uh, you know, this is, we just came out of a day of warring. So, um, hopefully you guys will jump back on. Hopefully, um, everybody will get back on and join in. Come on. We got to press through this stuff. Uh, technology is technology. Again, another distraction. Isn't it amazing how we were just praying about shutting the door to distractions and then all of a sudden, boom, here's a distraction. So let's jump back on. Come on, let's get back on this thing and let's finish this thing out. Um, uh, so uh, we were talking about just kind of shutting the door to the outside things and we were praying and seeking the face of God and then all of a sudden I look at my screen and it says, um, speed wasn't this and all of a sudden this and it just shut me off and cut me off and so what are we going to do well we're going to post the first part of this and then we're going to post the second part of it we don't care about social media rules right now we're, we're praying we're pressing through we're, we're getting through all these things we're going to press through these things technology does not dictate our prayer lives technology does not dictate uh, we're going to finish this thing we're going to finish well and uh, we're going to pray together and we're going to finish this thing out. So 
uh, you guys just uh, hang in there again, hang in there again, just jump on. If it does it again, we're coming back again. So, and I'll let Dallas take care of how to post all these things and how to how to work all these things out. But we're going to press through this. We're going to press through this. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting, though, that we're just coming out of this day of warring, and and we were just praying about this kind of thing right here, distractions. Um, and so we're just gonna we're gonna get right back after it. Listen, we're we're gonna help. We're gonna ask the Lord to help us. Help us find that place of peace and rest, Jesus. Help us to find that place of peace and rest, Lord. And we just declare it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare it right now that God, you are you are uh, moving and you are doing things, Lord God, that we can't even see. And we thank you, Lord, that even when 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 we get kicked off of internet access and Lord things begin to happen and all these things, we thank you, Jesus, that you're still here with us. You're still wherever we are. You're there, Jesus, and we thank you for that. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says this, pray without ceasing. That may be one of the um, most intimidating scriptures in all the Bible. Pray without ceasing. Literally, people have asked me about this scripture over, how can I do that? Like, Scott, how in the world can I just pray all the time? And it's one. it really is one of the most challenging little scriptures uh, in all of the Bible. But here's the deal. Jesus Christ has made it possible for us to have an ongoing conversation that is so meaningful it never stops. Because I believe there's a difference between prayer and the spirit of prayer. I believe that in prayer is our is our conversation with the Lord and 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 we have that conversation. But then there's a spirit of prayer where our spirit is praying all day long. With nothing may be coming out of our mouths, but we may be having conversations with with people around us. But in our spirit, we're praying. It's the spirit of prayer. That's how we can pray without ceasing. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important in our prayer lives. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important in our prayer life and our communion with God, because we can have the spirit of prayer that is praying continually while we go about our daily lives. And what we're all aiming for is a prayer life that becomes unceasing, that is life-giving, that is 24-7, that it becomes a reality. And so that, you know, if we can't get to that one location during the day or we can't get to that one room or that office or whatever it may be, listen, I'm not saying those things are not important. I, maybe above anybody else that's on this on this Facebook Live, man, I am all about step one, step two, consistency, having a plan, and all of that. I am all for that, and it helps me so much. And and I'm the type of personality, I need that in my life. I, I need those guardrails in my life. But every day doesn't turn out that way. And so we've got to learn how to have the spirit of prayer that we're going to follow the Lord. We're going to create a secret place every single day. And, 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 and through that, that is going to dictate, you know, we... We have got to realize that that locating is not about a certain room. It's not about a certain this or that. Locating is about shutting the door to all the distractions and getting in the secret place with God, in, in the shelter of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm telling you, when you learn that, it will set you free and it will create an opportunity for God to do things in your life that you have never, ever expected him to do. Because when you get to that place, then where you are doesn't dictate who you are. A lot of times we're trying to find that, like the perfect place to pray. Or, And again, I am one that I believe you do need a place. You need a place. You need a place, whether it's in your home, it's in your car, uh, it's during a certain time you drive. You need those places. But also, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the spirit of prayer. You don't always get those places. You don't always uh, get to, to go to that special place. You don't always get to go to that. You know, we have a certain time for our staff that, that you know, every single morning, the first 30 minutes of their day, you know, uh, their work day begins um, with prayer. That first 30 minutes is find a place. Well, guess what? Every day it doesn't always turn out that way. And, and so what we have to do is we've got to be in the spirit of prayer. We have to learn how to function in the spirit of prayer. And so that's, that's what we've been talking about tonight, locating. Jesus said, when you pray, 
go to a room, you know, get to that place, the secret, shut your door. And again, just in review, we know that Jesus was a man who didn't have a room every time. He would go to a solitary place. He would go to the mountain. He would go to the garden. He would go somewhere, but he would shut himself in with the Father. And what that meant was he would shut off all the distractions and he would, in his spirit, he would get to that secret place with the Father. And that's what we have to learn to do. So tomorrow, day five, day five. So we are we are trekking and we are moving forward. And so day five tomorrow in your being is that scripture, Matthew chapter six. And your knowing uh, tomorrow is... Um, is uh, is finding that place tomorrow. I want you to find that place, that secret place, under the shadow of the Almighty. It may be at your workplace. It may be anywhere. But I want you literally tomorrow, when you're around a bunch of stuff going on, I want you to go ahead and just practice getting in the secret place with the Lord. I want you just to do it. Man, boom. I'm shutting my door to everything. Now look, you... I'm not telling you not to work. You've got to work. You've got to do all those things. But what I am saying is in your spirit, find that place tomorrow, sometime during the day. Don't wait until it's completely silent. I want you to practice when it's not silent. I want you to practice. Lord, I love you. I thank you, Jesus. Even if you're having a conversation with somebody in your spirit, I'm shutting my door, Lord, and I'm getting in the secret place with you. And I am... I am going to be the ultimate in multitasking right now, Jesus, because in my spirit, I'm going to be prophesying. I'm going to be declaring things over people's lives while I'm having a conversation with them, while I'm working, while I'm getting my job done. I'm going to do those things, not because I'm the multitasker, but through you, Lord, all that stuff can happen. You can work all that stuff together. And Lord, you can do anything through my life if I just submit myself totally to you. And then the doing tomorrow is I want you to write out Psalm chapter 91, verse 1. I want you to write that out. Ask God to show you what that secret place means to you. Uh, Ask that Lord, uh, ask the Lord, you know, Lord, um, is that my drive that I need to be, you know, in that drive time? I need to stop listening. Uh, I need to stop listening to the news. I need to stop listening to sports. I need to stop doing this. And I need to take that time and during my drive to work or my drive to school or wherever it may be, man, I just need to get in that secret place, Lord. So teach me that. Lord, if there's a place in my house or if it's walking in my neighborhood or or whatever it may be, I want you to, to ask the Lord tomorrow to show you what that is. And once he shows you what that is, I want you to write down what he says. And I want you to resolve to shut the door, to make sure you use that place and use that time to shut the door to the outside distractions. And that's what locating is about. Locating is not about a certain place. Locating is about getting in a place with the Lord in the secret place. Secret place is not always quiet. Secret place is not always private. But the secret place is right here. And the secret place, you know, I have found myself getting in the secret place, surrounded by just craziness, but getting in the secret place. And I found that when I do that, somebody will come up to me and ask me something. Somebody will come up and talk to me or the things around me will just. And I'm like, wow, what just happened? And what happened was, is that I allowed myself to get in the secret place with the Lord no one knowing externally what I was doing, but internally getting in the secret place with the Lord. And all of a sudden the atmosphere changed. Listen, when you, when you learn how to get in the secret place with the Lord, the atmosphere around you will change. The atmosphere around you can change because you are getting in the secret place with the Lord. Because when you do that, You're inviting his peace. You're inviting his rest wherever you are. So if you're at the job place, you are welcoming him to your job. If you're at school, you're welcoming him to school. So if nobody else is welcoming him, if no one else is welcoming Jesus to your job place, you are. And the moment you welcome him is the moment peace comes. It's the moment rest comes. He's the peace speaker. He's the peace giver. And so the Lord is, is, is so ready to do that in our lives every single day. 
So locating is not about a place. It's about a person. And it's about you. And it's about being in His shelter. And it's about being under the shadow of the Almighty. God is good, right? He's so good. And uh, let me just share this with you guys before I get off here. Um, I want you to be praying for something for me tomorrow. Um, there is a young man that I have I have met that I, that I felt like the Lord has brought into my path. He's from another country. Um, he is here in my city. And um, he doesn't know a lot about the, the country. He's here on a visa. And I've been praying about how I can help this young man. The things that he needs are so far out of my comfort zone. I don't know anything about most of the information that he needs. I, I'm not an expert in it. Um, but tomorrow, uh, this young man will have an opportunity actually to work out with an athletic team at a college to see about the possibility of getting a scholarship. That just worked out tonight that tomorrow afternoon, this young man will have an opportunity to try out <laughs> with an athletic team um, to see if he can get a scholarship uh, to go to a certain college and stay in the United States and take the next step toward his dream. And then also this young man will have an opportunity to have a job interview Sunday morning before church. <laughs> and... Um, I, you know, I, I am just speechless at some of the things that I'm seeing the Lord do in the day that we live. And it may be the simplest things to some people, but to me it's miraculous what God is doing. And um, if you have a need, if you need a miracle, if you are hurting, you're wounded, you've been suffering, if you... Um, if you've given up on God and maybe given up on yourself, I just want to encourage you tonight that God is moving and that God is doing miracles in people's lives, not because they're perfect, not because they've made every right decision, but because they put themselves in a position and they just say, you know, Lord, I, okay, I'm going to give it all to you. I'm yours. Now, that sounds crazy because we are the Lord's, but we all have a choice. And when we make the choice to say, you know what, Lord, I give myself to you, then we begin to see things. It doesn't mean that he's going to give you a million dollars. It doesn't mean that he's going to give you a new house. It doesn't mean that he's going to give you a new car. But it means that you put yourself in a position to say, I don't have the answers. And as much as I try... Um, to make it all right. I can't make everything okay because there's always going to be something missing from me. There's always going to be something missing from me. And that something missing is you, Lord. And when we get to that place, I just want to tell you, your spirit comes alive. Like your soul is hopeful again. Proverbs 13, 12, it is my life verse. There's no doubt about it. It is my life verse. It is a verse that I have that I have built the discipline of my household, that I have built decision-making in my household on. And that scripture is, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire is fulfilled, it's a tree of life. You know, when you have no hope, it literally makes you sick. But when the desire is fulfilled, <laughs> it's a tree of life. It's a fruit-bearing tree. It's a tree that's connected to the waters, the living waters that grows and grows and grows. And a lot of times, what we need is not necessarily some miraculous angel coming from heaven moment. Sometimes all we need is to know there's hope. Because emotionally and spiritually and physically we may be sick because we've been hopeless but i want to encourage you tonight whoever's watching this and whoever watches this on friday if you watch it in the morning maybe you watch it on youtube later on much later on i just want you to know that there is hope 
there is hope. And his name is Jesus. He is hope. He is the light of the world. And he does love you. He loves you more than I can possibly express to you. There aren't, I do not have the words, and the English language does not have all the words to describe how much he loves you. And he will give you hope. And normally hope begins by saying, I'm yours, Lord. I'm going to stop fighting it. And it's yours. So if that's you tonight, I just feel like the Holy Spirit gave me that word for you. This isn't a part of our our prayer guide for tomorrow or not even really a part of our our topic tonight, which was locating, which was the secret place with the Lord, shutting the door to the outside things. I just really feel like the Holy Spirit wanted somebody to hear that. There is hope. There's hope. And you just have to get to the end of yourself and let him be the hope. You know, it's it's not anybody's fault. It's not circumstances fault. It's not even life's fault. You know, a lot of times it's us. You know, I, a lot of times I just have to look at me and say, man, it's me. And um, most of the times it is. It's just me. Uh, But thank God that he's given me grace. Thank God he's put some amazing people around me. Thank God he's given me an awesome family that love me in spite of all my stuff and imperfections. Thank God he's given me a wife who's patient with me and loving and kind to me. Thank the Lord that he's given me two beautiful daughters who, who love me for who I am and not who they want me to be. Um, Thank God he's given me some unbelievable friends, and he's given me an incredible community of believers to do life with. And that's hopeful. That's hopeful. It's, It's hope. So whoever that's for, man, take that. And if that was for you and it really spoke to the depth of who you are, man, give that to the Lord tonight and pray about that. And hey, send us... Uh, send us an email at mediahub at thpshreveport.com and just let us know how God's speaking to you through these things. Because we want to be open to these moments of just the prophetic beginning to flow. And by the way, I'm going to announce tonight, um, this is the very first announcement of this, I'm going to announce tonight that next Thursday from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, the Healing Place will be open to come for you to pray during that 12 to 1. We're going to have worship, prophetic worship. We're going to have a time of prophetic, but we're going to live stream that. So it's going to be on Facebook Live, and we're going to just, it's not going to be, hey, prayer number one, two, three. We're going to have a worship team there. They're going to be playing and prophesying through worship music, and I'm probably going to be prophesying some, and We're going to just put the wide lens on there and whoever's in that scope, you're going to see those people praying. And if you tune into Facebook Live, you're going to be able to pray with us and and listen and and prophesy with us. And we're going to make that a special addition to our 21 together. So next Thursday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., we're going to be live streaming a time of... um, uh, a time of worship music and uh, prophecy and prayer. And so you may want to tune into that, or you may want to be there live and in person if you can be there during your lunchtime. Uh, but some of these special little additions during our 21 Together I think are going to be cool. And so uh, anyway, that's kind of what I've got. I love you guys, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning back in from our little snafu that we had. And thanks for hanging in there with us. If you didn't catch the first part of it, go back and watch the first video. Dallas, our administrator, will put that together on the page and set it up to where everybody knows what's what. So Dallas, if you'd handle that for me, I'd appreciate that, buddy. I thank you so much, Dallas, for administrating for us every single night. Thank you for sacrificing uh, your time with us, Dallas, and being here with us to, to answer emails and to remind us of what we're praying for. Such a Such an awesome ministry that God's given our online uh, community pastor, um, Dallas Mora. And uh, so we're so thankful for Dallas. And just let him know how much you guys love him and appreciate his time as well. So I love you guys. Uh, Again, tonight, it's not about the hours of sleep. 
It's about the rest. So I'm not going to say sleep well. I'm going to say rest well. And may the peace of God be with you all. Have a great Friday tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.